All right, so the first start of the setup here, you're going to have an Erlenmeyer flask, you're going to have a gas pressure sensor up your lab quest, you're going to have a temperature sensor, this apparatus, and a syringe. You're not going to use all of these in all the different parts. For the first experiment, you're going to be doing a temperature and pressure, so you're going to take your temperature sensor. You're going to go ahead and plug that into channel 2. Technically, it doesn't matter, but we'll just go with that. So that's going to read our temperature. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hook up this thing to the gas pressure sensor. So the gas pressure sensor reads out of this part right here. So you're going to screw this onto here, but you need to be very careful when you do that, that you do it securely, but not overly securely, because this is fragile and can break off. Okay. This part, when you twist it this way, it's closed. You can even see a little hole there. And when the hole is here, air can flow in and out through here. So we're going to put that in, and then we're going to go ahead and secure that. And now, this pressure sensor is measuring the pressure of the gas inside of that flask. And so I can go ahead and change it, depending on what I do. The syringe I'm going to set aside from another experiment. We're just going to show a couple really simple things where we take some hot water, in this case warm water, and we change the temperature of the gas inside of here and kind of construct a plot. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this and put it inside of here, but I want to do that in a moment. Because I want to show you up close what we're going to do with the lab quest itself. So currently this is all hooked up like I just showed you. And now what we want to do is go through and do all the figuring. So first thing you want to do is you want to go into mode. And where it says time based you're going to click on that. And instead of time based you're going to do events with entry. Right. And then for the event we're going to do temperature. Where we're going to manually type in. Oops. Looks like I didn't put our them in there, oh well. And then for our units, we'll go ahead and go ahead and put Celsius. And then go ahead and hit OK. And when you hit play now, what's going to happen is it's going to create kind of a set of points where you can get different pressure different pressures, I'm sorry, at different temperatures. So currently, this is the current pressure it's reading, this is the current temperature it's reading. If I hit keep, I can then type in what that temperature is. So I'm going to type in the 21.7 degrees Celsius that we had, just like that. Okay, and that now recorded that as a point. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gas and I'm going to set it into the beaker of hot water and submerge it so that the gas changes temperature. And then now I'm going to take the temperature sensor and I'm going to put that in the same beaker. So what's now is going to happen is that the temperature is going to change, so we can see that going up there, and the pressure is also going to respond to the temperature change. The problem is, is that it takes a little bit of time for that to come out to a point where the pressure, of the temperature of the gas has reached equilibrium with the warm water. So we're going to let that sit for a little bit. In particular, we're going to look for when does the pressure stop changing. Okay, so let's say we're satisfied with that. We go ahead and hit keep, and we look at our temperature. Our temperature is 29.5 degrees. So we hit keep and type in the 29.5. And now we have two data points. So you will continue on and do this until you have five data points, but I'm going to go ahead and stop there. And so now I have these two data points, and what I can do is I can create a function and a graph on here. So if I go to analyze, and then under curve fit and pressure, sorry I had that backwards, so I now have pressure compared to temperature and I have this set of two points and you can choose on your fit what you want. So I want a linear y equals mx plus b and so now I have this y which is pressure is equal to the slope 0.2792 times x which is temperature plus this constant of 93.348. So I'm able to use this really quickly to come up with a representation of pressure versus temperature that I can then do some analysis of. For the second experiment, this is our setup. We've now hooked up this flask so that it's being read the pressure of. Uh, we've disconnected the temperature and we're going to use the syringe on this one. So for this, we're going to add puffs of air and look at how pressure varies with puffs. And a puff is just a certain amount, and generally you can pick. 
So I'm going to pick a certain amount. I'm going to do six milliliters. So there's six milliliters, and I'm going to hook this up to here. And currently it's open, so the hole is aligned in here so that I can push that puff of air in. And then I'm going to trap it. And when I do that, what I'm doing is I'm adding a puff of air to there, and the, the volume and the temperature are being the same, but now the pressure is different. And I'm going to do that again. I'm going to pull in a new puff of air from the room. So after I had recorded puff one, I could go ahead and open this up and then push in puff two and then recontain it where I now have two puffs of air. And I could go on and do another puff and another puff until I get at least five data points. So when I'm at this screen, I can kind of go between the meter where it's reading things and I can go back to the graph and vice versa. I can look at all my data points here if I want. So I'm going to go to the meter screen because I need to reset everything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to mode again and I'm now going to change what is temperature to puffs of air. Puffs. And the units there would be puffs, so I'm just going to leave that blank for now. And we're going to go ahead and hit play. Okay, so now, before I put a puff of air in, I'm going to hit keep. And this is now going to record what the pressure is with no puffs added, just whatever air was in there in the first place. And now I'm going to go ahead and inject a puff of air. And I'm going to seal that. I'm going to remove the syringe. And now my pressure has changed, so I'm going to hit keep. And now I've put in one puff of air. And then go ahead and fill up another puff, whatever amount that is. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. That's going to change the pressure again. Reseal. It looks like I broke my seal, unfortunately. But anyway, so we'll just go with the two puffs then, so that, or the one puff, so that we don't mess with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit stop. We're going to go to analyze, perfect and we're looking at the pressure versus puffs. We get a graph like this. And we'll go ahead and plug in a linear. We get our y-intercept, we get our slope. So we get pressure is equal to the slope times the number of puffs plus that. So in the third experiment here, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this. Just gonna gently unscrew this, being very careful, of course, that this doesn't get damaged. And we're going to go ahead and set our syringe somewhere in the middle. I'm going to put it at 10 milliliters. And we're going to connect the syringe like this. Being careful not to over tighten to the point where we put too much torque here. Okay, now the rule for this one is you can't hold one hand to hold the sensor and one to hold the syringe. You have to have both on the syringe or both on the sensor. So when you're moving the syringe, we're going to change the volume of the gas and look at how the pressure varies like this but you need to be careful that you never push really hard on this while holding this so you don't create a torque that causes this to snap off. Now as we're changing the volume, the pressure is changing. Do note though that there is a certain point where the pressure will no longer go any higher no matter how much I push. And so there is a limit to how high this can measure, so you want to make sure you stay under that limit. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera view so you can see what to plug in. So for our third experiment here, the way you're going to set this up again is you're going to go from mode from time-based to events with the entry. This time we're going to look at pressure, which the, the sensor is going to measure, and we're going to manually type in the volume as we change the volume of the gas in the syringe. I could not have done that any worse, could I? All right, so volume, and then for units we'll go with milliliters. There we go. So events with entry, volume, we're now ready to hit play. So I'll kind of move this over a little bit so maybe we can see a little bit. But I've got this currently at 10 milliliters, so I'm going to go ahead and keep. I'm going to type in that it's at 10. And that gives me my first data point. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the syringe where I'm only holding onto the syringe. Let's go ahead and 
right there in about six. I'm gonna keep. You wanna make sure that the pressure stabilizes when you're doing this with multiple people. So it should end up where this is kind of not moving. And let's go ahead and take one that's far out. Right around there. I think we're just about 20. There we go. So let's say keep. And we'll type in 20 milliliters. So now we got three data points. Let's go ahead and stop there. You can go further with yours if you want. Actually, let's do a couple more. So now we have all of our pressure and volumes. We're gonna go ahead and stop. And we're gonna do our analysis. And this one has a little more complicated analysis. So when we go to analyze and curve fit, we're gonna select our pressure volume. So pressure on the Y and volume on the X. And for our curve fit, we're going to go with the power. And so that gives us a Y equals constant times, uh, so Y is pressure in this case. So pressure is equal to a constant times volume raised to some power. And so we end up with a curve like this. And from there we can do our analysis.